In this video, we will be looking at how Autodesk Inventor's tools are entered into the system. In this case, I'm already inside of a part file, and what I want to do is I want to start up the line tool. So I can simply come back over in the panel bar and click on the line tool and start drawing lines. When I'm done drawing lines, I can either press the escape key or right click and press done. So if I want to repeat that last command, I have a couple different options here. I can right mouse click and the very top tool in the menu will be the last tool so in this case it's repeat line so again I can just draw some segments I'm just gonna press the escape key so I have two other options to repeat a given tool that I was just in I can press the enter key on the keyboard and of course it'll start back up or you can press the space bar all of those are good methods for repeating a tool that you were in you'll also notice if I come back over to the panel, some of our tools have letters with brackets. So in this case, L for line, C for circle. So if I move my cursor into the graphics window and just press C, I am now drawing circles. I'm going to again press the escape key to complete that. With some of these tools, you'll also notice that we have this drop down menu here. So by clicking on that, I have some other options. So under the circle, for example, here, I have three ways of drawing in a circle center point, a tangent circle, or an ellipse. So in this case, if I draw in an ellipse, I'm going to go back and navigate on the graphics window to place in that ellipse. But you'll notice the last tool that was used in this case, ellipse, comes back to the very top. So in this case, I could just press that back to the, to the center point circle and we're off and going. So a lot of these tools that you'll see inside of the panel bar are also available if you do a right mouse click you'll see that we'll have some options for some tools as well so in this case create a line, create a dimension as well so by right mouse clicking you're going to get a whole bunch of different options again depending upon the environment that you're in this menu will change but definitely a right mouse click menu and you're going to get the options usually that you're going to need for the operation that you're in. So in this case, I'm just going to press the escape key. And what I'm going to do now is I want to take a look at the ability to go back and customize these menus. So under the tools pull down, the very bottom is customize. So by clicking on customize, we have four different tabs. So the environment, this is going to tell us, so when I'm in the 2D sketch environment, what tools do I want to see? So usually we're going to leave those alone, but I want to take a look at toolbars. So this is pretty popular. I want to go back and I want to create a new CBT toolbar. Go ahead and click on OK here. If I move that over, you'll see that I have a blank toolbar. So what I want to do next is I want to populate that, so I'm going to click on the Commands tab. And on the left-hand side, these are our different categories that will that uh, are available inside of Inventor. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on Sketch, maybe. And I can go back and say, well, I want to do some auto-dimensioning. And all I'm going to do is drag over the tool, or in this case, a couple of the tools that I want, to go back and create a very sec very quick, simple toolbar. So in this case I'll close that out because I really don't need to do that. So if I go back here to my CBT, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one that I just created. So another popular request is changing the keyboard shortcut keys, also referred to as the aliases. So from the keyboards tab, and right now I'm displaying all the categories here, so you can see all of the different options that are already pre-programmed for us. But in this case, if I want to just take a closer look at maybe the sketch tools, if I come back down here and click on that, I can just filter out those given sketch tools. So in this case, if I want to go back and I want to place in a shortcut key for another tool, all I need to do is go ahead and find that tool so in this case, chamfer, I'm going to type in CH for chamfer. So it doesn't require just a single key. We can have multiple keystrokes to get that done. So in this case, I'll just enter. And now I just programmed CH. 
So if I would select a specific keystroke that's already in existence, Inventor will pop up a dialog box telling me that that is the case. So you notice by default these were all single letters that were already pre-programmed. There's an option on the lower left hand corner of this dialog box to use the multi-characters. And what this is going to do, it's going to extend the capability for Inventor to go back and use more like an AutoCAD environment here. So if I go ahead and close this out, so if I go back and press on C now, I'm going to have more options here. So when I press C, it didn't actually default right into the circle tool. If you look at the lower left hand corner of the screen, it's showing me that I have some options. And that may not exactly be the easiest thing to do from that uh, status bar. So we have a couple application options here that may be helping us here. So if I go back and click on the tools, application options, and then from the general tab here, we have three different options here, so I can show the command prompting. And I'm just going to turn all three of these on. Let's take a look at them. I'm just going to go ahead and click on Apply, and we'll close that out. So now if I go ahead and press on C, I have the dialog box that's popping back up with my other options. So I can just say, well, I want to create that center point circle, and away we go. In this case, I'm going to start up the line tool. And with the prompting on, you'll notice here, I'm getting the same display that before was on the status bar to now display where my cursor's at. So again, you can turn on these options from the tools, application options, and disable the command prompting. Again, that's the same information that was displayed on the status bar or the autocomplete and that alias input dialog box that we had. So for clarity, I'm going to turn off those bottom two for now and apply that. And I'm also going to switch back at this point the customize option under the keyboard tab and I'm going to uncheck the multi character and again let's go back to our sketch because last thing I want to show you is I went back and I programmed in that CH for chamfer if I want to go ahead and I'm just going to delete that back out so I just press the delete key and my programming is now complete so we can also import and export all of the customization that we have done here again by pressing the export it's going to create an XML and of course when we import it it will import that exact same file here so in this case it's telling me that I can't do it because I'm already in a dialog box so I will close all those out and we have the reset all just in case changes I made I want to take it right back to where it was out of the box just press reset all